Hello students, how are you all? I hope you all are fine and safe at home. This is your teacher, Mrs. Sonal Chauhan from Adarsh Education Society. Standard 5th, Subject Environmental Studies Part 1. Today, we are going to begin with the second chapter of your syllabus, that is Motions of the Earth. Let us first understand the word rotation. For this, let's try this activity. Take a top, spin it and observe its movement. The top turns around itself. Any object that turns around itself actually turns around a certain imaginary line. Now, what is meant by imaginary line? It means that when an object turns around itself, we feel as if it is turning around a particular line. But actually there is no line. We feel that there is a line around which the top or any object is moving. So, the turning of an object around itself is called rotation. And the imaginary line around which it rotates is called its axis of rotation. So in the picture you can see that there is a line drawn with a dotted line. So this is the axis of rotation and around which the top is rotating. And so the this movement of rota uh, turning is called rotation. Now let us understand the word Earth's rotation. For this, there is another activity. Take a globe like a one in the picture and spin it. Note the line around which it rotates. Now, take a plumb line and hold it close to the globe as shown in the picture. Now, what is plumb line? Plumb line is an instrument that is used in a construction business to find the level of wall. Now, what if you don't have a plumb line? Not to worry. If you cannot get a plumb line, tie a long thread to an eraser and use as a plumb line. You will see that the plumb line and the earth's axis are at an angle to each other. That is, the earth axis is inclined. Now, what is meant by inclined? Inclined means slanting or tilted. Now, as you can see in the diagram, the plumb line is a straight line. And the axis of earth's rotation, that is the line NS, is the axis of earth's rotation. So both these lines are making an angle at each other. So we can understand from the diagram that the earth rotates with its axis inclined. The line NS in the picture shows the earth's axis. It passes through the center of the earth. The point N and S are called the poles of the earth. The N is called the North Pole of the Earth and S is called the South Pole. Now, let's understand the word Equator. If a circle were drawn around the surface of the Earth exactly in between the North and the South Poles, it would divide the Earth into two equal parts. That is, if we draw a line or a circle exactly between the north and the south pole. We have learnt what is north and the south pole. The two ends of the earth is called north and the south pole. The upper portion is called north pole and the down part is called south pole. So if we divide, draw a circle, it would divide the earth into two parts. So this imaginary circle is called the equator. So, the equator divides the earth into two equal parts. The portion of the earth above the equator is called northern hemisphere 
and the portion of the earth below the equator is called southern hemisphere. Let us try another activity. Stand a candle in the middle of the large table. Draw a big circle around the candle. Place a globe at any point on this circle. Light the candle. See that it is dark in the room. Suppose that the candle is the sun. Observe which part of the globe gets the sun's light and which one does not. Now, looking at the globe from the direction of the North Pole, turn it anti-clockwise. Now, what is anti-clockwise? It means against the direction of our clock. This is how the earth rotates. That is, it rotates from west to east. Now, from this activity, we have noticed that as the earth rotates, its different parts come into the light of the sun one after another and turns away from it also in the same order. So it means that the different parts of the earth come in front of the sun and moves away from the sun one by one. Now let us understand the word sunset and sunrise. Stick a red bindi on the globe. Set up the previous model of the globe and the candle. Turn the globe anti-clockwise. Note when it is sunrise, noon and sunset at the location of the bindi. After one sunrise, note when the next one occurs at the bindi. You will see that this happens when the earth completes one rotation, that is, when it makes one complete turn around itself. So students, you have to note that when the bindi will come back to its position and it will come back to its same position when the earth will complete one circle. And this process goes on continuously as the earth is rotating around itself. This period of time that the earth takes to complete one rotation is called a day. So, when the earth will complete one rotation, it's called a day. A day has two parts. As you can see in the diagram, daytime and nighttime. Or simply we can say day and night. For the purpose of measuring the time, we divide the whole day into 24 parts, each of which is called an hour. So that is why students, we have a 24 hours in a day because a day is divided into 24 parts. Remaining chapter we will see in the next video. Thank you students.